this video, I'm going to go through API ICP website and uh, so give you a tour of API side uh, course examination and all you need to know. So if you go to Google and type in API ICP, the very first site you see is individual certification program from American Petroleum Institute. And if you go to certification, scroll down this window to API side and find the page here. Now, this exam can be done in person or through remote proctoring. You can click on these icons and go and have more information. Basically, uh, once you apply to API to attend this exam, it uh, asks you to select the window, pay the fees, and it doesn't ask you, unlike other exams, for uh, verification of your experience because no experience is needed as a prerequisite for this exam. And uh, they will send you an email authorization. And then by that email authorization, you go to Prometric. Now, if you have chosen, uh, and then between that three weeks window that you have already chosen, you select the date and the test center if you want to do it in person. Prometric has over 3000 centers across uh, 160 countries. You can also do remote proctoring recently. So that means you can attend this exam from the comfort of your office office or home and uh, but you should have a, a desktop camera so that the invigilator can verify your ID and uh, the same rules apply there they do a ID check government issued valid ID should be Latin and uh, uh, it should not be expired then otherwise they will refuse uh, you to continue uh, with the exam so always carry two we recommend that a passport and a driving license for example or any other government issued photo id uh, and uh, if, uh, if you are uh, doing by remote proctoring or remote exam uh, nobody is allowed to enter the room you're not allowed to leave the room you have to turn the desktop around uh, so the invigilator can see that there is nothing at your table and this is a closed book exam, so uh, unlike the in-person one, um, that they give you a pen and pencil and uh, a pocket calculator, uh, you you cannot use your own pen and paper. And obviously, because the remote, they will not give you a pen and paper, and uh, the calculator also they will not give you so you have to use the desktop calculator in case you need to do some calculation but for this exam i doubt you need any calculation to do uh, or if it is then it would be very simple calculation and you can use the desktop calculator uh, there is a publication effectivity sheet here and uh, this is revised every year it is valid only up to august 2022 um, and uh, there is a study guide for source inspection of routine open as well and uh, this is uh, free so you can download it and study it around 45 to 50 percent of question comes from only this study guide so what how api comes to the publication effectively she's actually is a list of documents that you have to study here and if there is any red lines uh, here except this warning that means there is a revision uh, has been changed or a new document has been added compared to last year on a, the, uh, a particular document has been uh, with a new revision has been brought at this time so uh, this list of documents is actually comes from what api uh, describes as job description for a uh, source inspector rotating equipment and based on the job description in order to do the justice to that job description the source inspector should know certain uh, have certain knowledge and experience and uh, 
based on that, they back calculate this and they come with a list of documents that you should be aware of and you should know. Uh, the, this is a basic level uh, exam. It's not a supervisory or master level, so the questions would be very basic and they want to know if you know the basic, the, you know, the, the vocabulary, the terms and definition, the scope, uh, important things during um, actual source inspection activities. So as you can see here, you have to study 578, 610, 611, 614, 17, 18, 19, 77, 92, all about the uh, uh, pumps, turbines and compressors, um, these documents. And then um, this is a very important document that if you are a rotating equipment source inspector, you should be familiar with. This is the uh, performance acceptance test. Um, and they've got tables and all that. So depending on which grade or level you want to test, uh, it's all there. So the actual test of most of the pumps done uh, according to HI 14.6 uh, Hydraulic Institute. And then you should also know about the materials, ASME Section 2, NDT, ASME Section 5, uh, Construction Code for pres Pressure Vessel, ASME Section 8, and only uh, UCS, USC 5657, Acceptance Criteria, Examination of Steel Casting, and then ASME Section 9, Welding, and only these sections, QWs up to 540, you should know about uh, NDT personal certification and the reference uh, is SNTC TC1A uh, the recommended practice for per personal qualification and certification NDT um, then ASTM A703 and also you should know uh, about MSS SP55 which is the standard uh, quality standard for steel casting and you should know about the types of the uh, surface perforation like solvent cleaning, power tool cleaning, white metal commercial blast, and etc. So this is the list of documents that you need to study. Now let's go and see uh, the study guide. Uh, this is A to Z of a uh, uh, source inspector rotating equipment uh, manual and it covers uh, everything from A to Z like definitions, abbreviations and it comes to training certification, management program and then uh, planning activities, uh, also source inspection performance, examination methods, uh, final acceptance, manufacturing and fabrication process and it goes and covers all the pumps and like centrifugal pumps, drivers, gears, steam turbines, loop oil system, reciprocating pumps, rotary type pumps, compressors, axial centrifugal compressors, and then uh, you know there are some pictures here. They're very useful guide, and uh, that you can study for free. We have also highlighted this in our publication, effectively sheet highlights, and brought it our module three of the exam uh, training course. Uh, let's go and see what uh, fees you need to or when you can do the exam. So as you can see here, we are already in September. So there is no exam except there is one at November 4 to 25. So if you have already registered for this exam and the application deadline was September 2, so you can't uh, get approval or apply for this after September 2. So if you haven't applied, then you can go to at the time of application, you go to see the three weeks exam windows for 2023. Uh, the first one is on March with the application deadline on January 6, but you can do it right away now because this is the latest, this is a deadline. And uh, you can even choose uh, the July exam window or you can choose the November exam window here. Okay, uh, you can do it even right now. So back to certification. Uh, again, I'm scrolling down and going through this uh, 
installed on the ROM one. So about the qualification, you don't need any qualification, any industry experience would do. The recertification is if you pass, but, uh, you shall, uh, uh, you can apply for recertification uh, 90 days before the expiry. These certificates are uh, valid for two years or 90 days grace period after the expiry, subject to late application fee of $150 if you do after the expiry up to 90 days after 90 days of grace period you have to um, do the initial exam and pay the full fees all over again and every six years there is a quiz uh, that would practically uh, you can do it online 25 question uh, you can uh, do it between four hours you can interrupt it up to two three times and you can attend the quiz twice up to maximum twice and it would practically would be uh any latest development for the past six years or you know so they want to know you're up to date they are also uh, bringing api starting from january 2022 uh, the CPD requirement for recertification for most of their certifications. We are a CPD accredited company and all our certificates are issued uh, and ports uh, more than over above the minimum requirement of API regarding CPD hours that you have to go through. So the fees, if you go to fees here, Again, on schedule and fees, um, this course, you have to pay $415 for the initial exam for non-API member. For API member, is $315. Now, API does not give individual membership, so your company should be, that you are working for, should be an API member. So, because normally not many companies are API member, you end up paying $415. For recertification, you pay $315 every three years. And uh, for rescheduling, you pay $150. So if you fail or the exam window you want to change, which is as good as failing um, the three weeks exam window, you have to pay $150. And there is also $150 for late application when you want to renew your certificate during the grace 90 day grace period uh, for most of it just going to peruse through and see if there is anything i'm have not talked about uh, yeah the last thing is uh, number of questions um and hours this exam is three hours 15 minutes and 110 question 100 question or a score, 10 or pre-test question are not scored. And uh, the non-scored question are not marked, so they are all shuffled together. So you have to answer all the 110 question. Try uh, to keep a steady speed, uh, speed with uh, uh, progress accordingly. So for example, every one and a half hour, you should be uh, answering around 50 to 55 questions. And I would recommend that you allocate uh, hello, 15 to 30 minutes to review all the flagged of questions. Is multi-choice uh, paper reference material not allowed into the exam? And there is an exam tutorial before the exam starts, which practically tells you the how the buttons and icons work. So before you start the exam, there is this tutorial that you have to accept uh, non-disclosure agreement, which means it is illegal uh, to share the question that you see in this exam with others. And uh, you can see the number of questions here, that which question you are attempting. You can see the remaining time here on the top, and you can see your progress here as you go along. And you should see, they should be able to see your name here the candidate name and uh, using the mouse the same way as you use it's the same thing and if you want to flag off a question or uh, you can click on that and flag it off 
um, and then you can use the next button if a, it's a long question more than a page long so it says it requires scrolling so you have to scroll down in order to answer the question and the time remaining we talk about and there is a flag off button here that you can flag off and uh, then so that at the end you can review all the flagged off questions so anything you are not absolutely sure you can flag off if you click on a choose the an answer and click on it left click so it changes color so it shows that's a question you have chosen if you click again it you practically unchoose it or you can click another one it would be only one one of these questions would be correct there wouldn't be like both a and b or all of the above or none of the above yeah it would be a definite question uh, answer to each question that you have to choose and always api ask you to choose the best answer some question may be right but some other question may be more right um so there is a calculator with the icon here and uh, if you click on this you see the calculator if you need any calculation and uh, you can uh, the mouse on the words and keep dragging and then it would highlight this if you wish to uh, to zoom in and uh, you can also right click on a answer that you think is absolutely right so you would strike them off so you can zoom in on the possible right answers uh, at the end you can uh, see the review section review and you can filter it by an attempted question attempted question or flagged off question and you can see that uh, the flagged off has a flag on it and other so this is flagged off and not attempted and this is uh not flagged off but uh not answered also so you can filter it and see all the flagged off question answer all the question because there is no negative marking uh there is a caption below each question that can you you can leave a comment if you want to challenge a question but remember that this is coming off your time at the end there is a uh, final section you see that there is a it says a, a finish section or so if you click on this it will ask you if you would like to finish this section and if you click once again that would be the end of the exam or when you run out of time so the time the minute you start the exam the time will start clicking here until it reaches zero and then automatically you run out of time and uh, you can't continue anymore and that would be the end of the exam uh, after the exam you shall receive a email that tell you it's a preliminary pass or preliminary fail or uh, whether it is uh, a marginal a marginal is too close to call because api uses scaling so that uh, the level of difficulty is standardized across all the questions for all the exams and windows uh, so but roughly you need to uh, answer 70 percent of the question correctly of the school question so uh, the reason they use this pretest is that uh, they keep always revising their question data bank the api as and when new documents is added to publication effectively sheet or revision have changed and uh, so they are checking that you are up to date with the latest revision and uh, so a subject matter design new question and it is checked by two other subject matter experts and they want to know whether the question is written clearly and whether this is something that an api source inspector should know after that this will be marked as non-scored question it goes to question data bank and uh, during the exam uh they get a statistic of how many people answer it correctly is it too easy is it too difficult or has it been challenged by candidates because it wasn't clear uh, and then once it passed the second uh, test it will be uh grouped as a scored question and hence that's why you have this 10 pre-test questions these are experimental questions you can apply here click this button go uh and apply for the exam okay so first you need to um, 
create a free account, upload your credentials and uh, pay the fees and then, you know, uh, and so forth. This is a free account unless you try to attend the exam. So this is all I think I can say for uh, API side source inspector rotating equipment. Uh, you can click here about remote testing. There is a few tutorials from uh, Prometric. Uh, Prometric actually subcontracted by API to do the exam. There is a statistic here. It is very uh, interesting to see how many people have passed. Normally around 50% pass rate. So if you have any question, please uh, come to our website and uh, and try our free quiz uh, or um, study our first and second model for free. We are a CPT accredited and APIU approved training provider and we provide this course, uh, API side full course, which is, uh, is 40 CPT credit hours worth. So a certificate of achievement for 40 CPT credit hours will be awarded if you attend this course and uh, it has eight hours of video 151 lectures thousand questions 2000 cue cards and if for any reason you failed or you couldn't attend the exam we will renew it for another four months uh, you should have access 120 days 24 7 course access plus online support and uh, we have uh, three sections for technical query general query access and it where uh, we try to answer uh, any of your query uh, within minutes during working hours. Thank you for listening and good luck.